What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Nightmare Culture and this time I want to discuss why do asymmetrical horror games tend to always fail? If you look at all the asymmetrical horror games that have come out, there's been tons. I'm going to exclude Dead by Daylight for now because they've done so well. But let's look at Friday 13th, legal issues, and also they had a lot of issues at the beginning that kind of helped led to their downfall, even though it's my favorite asymmetrical horror game. You had last year The Nightmare, which lasted a hot minute and was an actual good game. You had Evil Dead, which had a lot of tons of issues. You had the Ghostbusters game, which lasted, I mean, I guess you call that asymmetrical horror game. But anyways, that did not last long at all. Maybe a couple of months where it had that strong fan base. And you have Tex Chainsaw Massacre, which to me is still a great game, but it it is losing some of its fan base. I, I feel like personally, and I think there's just some issues that are causing that as well. But then you have a odd one. You have Dead by Daylight. That's been around since 2016 and yet its fan base is still pretty damn strong. And they're constantly releasing content. I mean, think about that. 2016 is 2023. Seven years and that game is still going on strong. What have they done different? First off, let's talk about why these games usually fail. If you don't know what an asymmetrical horror game is, well... I guess I can explain it really quick. An asymmetrical horror game are multiplayer games that involve one or more players as the killers or monsters or slashers as the rest are survivors or victims. These games are usually pretty fun and popular because of the whole horror, stealth, and teamwork. But like I said, let's talk about the challenges. I think one of the biggest reasons at first is balancing issues. It can be really difficult to balance an asymmetrical horror game. You have abilities on both sides. Usually the killer is OP or the too overpowering for the victims. It's so easy for them to escape. Vice versa. This leads to a lot of frustration. Most of the time boredness. And eventually leads to the downfall of the game. And that's the thing. That's got to be hard on all developers. Which side do you listen to? It's too hard to be a killer, but it's too easy to escape. Let's fix that. Let's make the killers a little tougher. Now it's too tough to be a victim. Eventually, you got to say, okay, you're going to have to play it the way it is. One of the other reasons why these games fail is because of the repetitive nature of them. I mean, it's kind of usually always the same maps and your objectives are pretty similar. You must fix this or fix that in order to escape. And I think at the very beginning, that's always so much fun. There's a thrill, tension. You're freaking out when you're being chased by a killer. It's so much fun. And then after a while, that starts to wear off. Almost like the novelty of it wears off. And of course, because it's asymmetrical horror games, and usually if you have games like Friday 13, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Evil Dead, you're stuck to that lore, to that franchise. And I think that can lack a variety for a lot of players. So it just kind of limits like what it's about. The diversity, creativity, the aesthetics, all those things. Because you're basically, like I said, stuck to one fan base. Even though for me personally, I'm a huge Friday 13th fan. But I think Friday 13th was going to blow up up there with Dead by Daylight if it wasn't for all the legal issues they had. Gun Media was consistently giving us new survivors, new maps, new Jasons, and they were even going to add in new style of gameplays, and they gave us the single player challenges, or story mode, I guess you would call it. And then the last reason I think some of these games fail is just normal technical issues. It's hard to keep games stable when you're online, you're doing crossplay, you got to keep it smooth, you're going to have lag, lag's going to cause a lot of issues and cause more frustration. So why do they develop these games? It's almost like saying, I'm going to develop an asymmetrical horror game knowing that eventually this game's going to fail. I think it's just the excitement of when these games first come out. I love asymmetrical horror games, but I do get bored of them eventually. And then eventually it takes 20 minutes to get in a match and I'm basically done. Except one, Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight has survived it all since 2016. What has behavior done so different? And I think it's everything I discuss that's wrong with asymmetrical horror games, they kind of fix. Your lack of variety, well that's fixed. You have killers from Nightmare on Elm Street, Tex Chainsaw Massacre, Michael Myers, I mean granted they don't have their exact names, but still. 
Alien, Stranger Things, Resident Evil, The Ring. I mean, the list goes on. I think that's what makes Dead by Daylight so popular. They're constantly bringing in survivors from said movie franchise or video game franchise. The maps are always changing. Now, the game to me is the most repetitive out of all asymmetrical horror games. I think it's semi-overrated with its repetitiveness. You fix the generators, you escape. Yet, the fans don't hate it, really. They love it. And I don't blame behavior for not wanting to change what's already great. Now, the whole reason why I wanted to do this video was because I've been concerned about Texas Chainsaw Massacre's future. The game started in September, and yet it's November, and I'm already getting comments on some of my videos. I'm hearing other people talk in forums and Reddit about how the game's already starting to collapse. That's way too soon for a game to have faults. I think Gun Media coming out with the story mode and fixing some issues is going to help tremendously. But I really think they need to make sure they put variety in it. And also, I think the reason why it could fail a little bit is because it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's not exactly the most beloved horror icon. Asymmetrical horror games are hard in general because it's horror games. You're already trying to appeal to a much smaller crowd. A horror crowd. You're going to have your casual gamers that jump on because it's just something new and it could be fun for about a month or two. Then after that, you have to keep your hardcore fan base. Those are the ones you have to keep happy. And for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, well, I just don't feel like there's a lot. If this would have been a Michael Myers game or a Freddy game or even a Ghostface asymmetrical horror game, I think you would not be having this talk of longevity, at least right now. So what do you guys think? Is wanting to make a asymmetrical horror game just a dumb move for many companies? You have the new one coming out, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which I am happy for. I, I love that film. But talk about a really small cult following base of fans. That one's going to be scary. But at the same time, what has Dead by Daylight done so right? They have been able to manage to keep a very strong fan base for seven years. So what is it? Do you think asymmetrical horror games are bad? Or do you think the companies that make them just don't give the variety like behavior does? And what can companies take from behavior? Let me know all this in the comments below because I really do want to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.